Okay, today we are doing a investigation on reflections. And so, aside from what we do in class today, here's a short little lesson about reflections. This is about as tough as it would get. This one starts with a V shape. And then I've got this negative on the inside and a negative on the outside. One thing at a time. It's horizontal things on the inside and this things on the outside are vertical things. So it needs to both have a horizontal flip, and just think about it for a second. If you flip this this way, do you get that that's another one of those cases where it would not matter? All right. Just like on a parabola when you try to do that, a left-right flip, it doesn't even do anything. But then it fl you flip it the other way because of this, the vertical on the outside, and your new parabola looks like this. Okay. So I'll get rid of the parent one. And now I just have to move it plus one, which means what? Left one. Now I know all of us are into like trying to do as little amount of work as you have to do because you have so many classes. And besides that, you might want to have a life besides school. So if you want to do as much or as little as possible, but at the same time still get it right, at minimum I would check one point at least one point on an XY chart. At least one. That wouldn't be that hard, would it? So I stick in a zero for X. I go back here and put in a zero for X and I see what happens. Zero plus one is one. Negative makes it negative one. Absolute value makes it back to positive one. And the negative on the outside makes it negative one. Zero, negative one. Does it look to you like zero, negative one was on this graph? Yes. So at least then you're not guaranteed. Maybe you got unlucky and you happen to have hit one of the points. If you want to be really sure, do a couple points. It's not that hard to put in another one. If I put in, let's say, a negative one in here, if I put in a negative one, negative one plus one is zero, and negative zero is zero, and absolute value is zero, and negative of zero is still zero, negative one, zero. Negative one, zero is right there. Yay. I got two points right. I can be pretty sure I'm doing it right. Still could get incredibly unlucky, but have happened to hit two spots of a different line, but unlikely. Okay, so that is a vertical and a horizontal. Let's do another kind with square roots. Y equals negative square root of X plus 4. Let's just do that one. See if you can do a square root, shift it, flip it, get your final answer, check it with the kid to the left of you or to the right of you, rows one and two, you're combined, rows three and four, you guys make a triangle in the front, rows five and six, straight across from you. Please double check that their graph looks the same as yours. I'll pause for a second while I give this one a shot. Okay, so we're back, and you should have made this a ramp shape, so I like to describe it as, and then I had to do an up-down flip, a vertical flip, flip. Vo, vertical on outside. This is horizontal on inside. Vertical flip means it should be down here. So easy to get those two flips confused. And then, what's this horizontal thing? Plus four. What does that mean? Four left. So I take it after it's flipped and move it four left. One, two, three, four. What if I really, really wanted to be sure I was right? X, Y chart. And it's not that hard to do. X, Y, and now you've got to think about it. You can't just stick in any number you want. Just pick something that is kind of in this zone, like, like maybe 0 or 1 or 2 or maybe negative 1 or negative 2, because I know those will come out if I did it right. So let me pick like negative uh, 3. Okay, and I picked that on purpose. It's not cheating. I looked and I saw this and I thought, what would I put in so that I can have a nice square root? By sticking in negative 3, I can have it come out to be a 1, and square root of 1 is 1, and then this negative makes it negative 1. Negative 3, okay, where I guess I made these marks kind of capriciously. You can go like this, and 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go. Okay, so negative 3, negative 1 would mean negative 3 is over here, negative 1, and so it would be like right there, and yay. That's on my graph, so I'm feeling pretty confident I did it right. Raise your hand if you feel comfy with that stuff. Okay, good. So, let's start the homework. I'll pause for a second. We'll pull the homework. Okay, so here's our worksheet. It's called Reflections Investigation. 
Now this first one, I'm just going to kind of fly through it. The square root of x by now, I hope you can do square root function pretty quick in your head. Over 9 and up 3, over 4 and up 2, 1 and 1 goes together. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm sticking in like 0 in for x and getting 0. Sticking in 1 for x and getting the square root of x. Square root of 1 is 1. I'm sticking in 4 for x, and I'm getting square root of 4 is 2, and I've graphed those. There we go. And now I just have to do the negative on the outside, and that's going to make it do high vo. What's this one, a vo or a high? Come on, say it. It's a vo. It's a vertical on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to do a vertical flip, so it looks something like that. That's a sketch. To get credit for a graph, you have to have at minimum three points, and on a curve, usually we want more like five. This one, we can't even get five. We can get one, two, three, and four points on that graph. So there, now it's a graph. Do you get the difference? A sketch is just a quick little line drawn kind of in the right general neighborhood. A graph actually has dots that are in this graph. And if I really wanted to have it right, I would make an XY chart, and I would say... All right, what's a point I think works? Uh, I think 4 is going to work. I put in a 4. I stick a 4 in right here. And I get the square root of 4, which is 2. And then I put a negative on it. It's negative 2. 4, negative 2 should be on my graph. And look, it is. Over 4, down 2, it's on my graph. Okay? All right, so that's the process. Now, uh, just have to do one more here. This has got the other kind of flip on problem 2. And then on number three, you just compare them. And basically you say one of them went vertical and the other one horizontal. It's not too, we don't need super in-depth answers for number three there. Okay, uh, four and five is basically an identical theme. We are going to skip four and five and six and seven because it's the same exact process. Let's go to eight. Problem eight. Negative square root of x plus two. Hmm. If you were just stumped and your brain was not firing perfectly, you're like, I don't even remember how that's supposed to look. What can always save you? X, Y, chart. X, Y. And I go, I don't even remember what that's supposed to look like. I, I do, but I'm just saying that. Okay. So, okay, what if I put in a 1? You put in a 1, and you see if it works out nice. Square root of 1 is 1, and then I make it negative. Negative 1 plus 2. 1. 1, 1 must be on my graph. Yay, now I find another point. Uh, let's say I stick in a 2. That's not going to work so nice because the square root of 2, ugh. So, pick something that will work nice. Like what? Like 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and then I make it negative. Negative 2 plus 2. So I put in a 4, I got a 0 out. Over 4, up 0. I still can't tell from just two dots where this curve is, so I should probably keep going. Um, what's another easy thing I could put in for x? 9 would work. Okay, put in x is 9. Mm -hmm. Square root of 9 is 3. Negative 3 plus 2. Negative 1. 9, negative 1. I wish I could just have one more point. What's the easiest of them all that we said yet? Zero. If I stick in a zero, that's going to be easy because the square root of zero works out so nice. And it just comes out to two. Zero, two. Oh, I see it now. It's like the square root function that normally goes like this, except this one doesn't go like that. This one goes flipped. Does it make sense? Think about it. It was flipped. We just established it was supposed to be flipped. And it was moved up to. See? It's not here anymore. It's moved up to. Does that make sense? Good. Okay. So I hope you're seeing that the XY chart in tandem with understanding which way it's supposed to move and flip is a great combo. If you can do both of those things, you're likely to not get any of these wrong. Because you can just be double check things and be really careful, even when they're complicated, like on number 10. Even something like that's got all kinds of changes and moves and flips, and it's no big deal. You can always check it with an XY chart.
just got to be careful because not every number is going to work out nice. Stick some numbers in, they just don't work. And so you don't use those. Stick in other numbers. All right. So that's about all we need to know for today's lesson. We'll do more investigating stuff outside the video here.